My name is Erica Fatland, and I am a social anthropologist and author. From a young age, I have been captivated by the world's cultures and histories. This fascination led me to study social anthropology, a field that explores the complexities of human societies. My academic background provided a strong foundation for my writing, allowing me to approach complex themes with a nuanced perspective. Before Shofaran, I wrote several books, each inspired by my travels to different corners of the globe. My journeys have taken me from the icy landscapes of the Arctic to the bustling streets of Asian megacities. Each experience has enriched my understanding of the world and its people. These journeys, both physical and intellectual, have shaped my perspective as a writer. I believe in the power of storytelling to bridge cultures and foster empathy. Through my books, I aim to transport readers to new and unfamiliar worlds, inviting them to see the world through different eyes. Shafararan, which translates to the seafarer in English, is a book that lies close to my heart. Born from my fascination with the sea and its ability to connect people and cultures, the idea took root during my travels along the coast of West Africa. I became aware of the indelible mark left by the Portuguese Empire. Portugal, a small country, once commanded a vast maritime empire. Shafararan follows the historical footsteps of the Portuguese Empire, a maritime power that once stretched from Brazil in the west to Macau in the east. The book is structured around my own travels to former Portuguese colonies, tracing the roots of Portuguese explorers and merchants centuries ago. My journey began in Lisbon, the historical heart of the Portuguese Empire. From there, I ventured to the Atlantic islands of Madeira and Cape Verde, early outposts of Portuguese expansion. I then sailed down the coast of West Africa, visiting countries like Guinea-Bissau, Sao Tome, and Principe, and Angola. Each destination offered a unique glimpse into the complex legacy of the Portuguese Empire. I explored ancient forts and trading posts, remnants of a bygone era. I walked through bustling markets and vibrant cities, witnessing the enduring cultural fusion that resulted from centuries of Portuguese influence. My journey also took me across the Atlantic to Brazil, the crown jewel of the Portuguese Empire. In Brazil, I delved into the history of sugar plantations, slavery, and the lasting impact of Portuguese colonialism on Brazilian society. Throughout my journey, I was confronted with the complex and often troubling legacy of colonialism. In many of the places I visited, the shadows of the past loomed large. I saw firsthand how the exploitation and oppression of the colonial era continue to cast a long shadow over the present. However, I also encountered stories of resilience, resistance, and cultural survival. I met people who were reclaiming their history and forging their own identities in the wake of colonialism. I learned about the ways in which local cultures had adapted and transformed in response to Portuguese influence, creating unique hybrid traditions that continue to thrive today. Shofararan does not shy away from the darker aspects of Portuguese colonialism. It acknowledges the violence, exploitation and cultural destruction that were an integral part of empire building. At the same time, the book seeks to present a nuanced and multifaceted view of history, recognizing the agency and resilience of the people who were subjected to colonial rule. Section 5. The Human Story While Shofararan explores the grand narratives of history and empire, it is ultimately a book about people. Throughout my travels, I sought out the human stories that lie at the heart of history. I interviewed historians, writers, artists and everyday people, listening to their perspectives on the legacy of the Portuguese Empire. I met fishermen in Cape Verde who still use traditional methods, 
passed down through generations. I spoke with artists in Angola who are using their work to grapple with the legacy of colonialism. I shared meals with families in Brazil who welcomed me into their homes and shared their stories. These encounters reminded me that history is not simply a collection of dates and events. It is the lived experience of countless individuals. By listening to the stories of people from all walks of life, I gained a deeper understanding of the human impact of colonialism and the enduring connections that bind us across time and distance. Section 6. The Craft of Writing Writing Shafararan was a challenging but ultimately rewarding experience. It required extensive research, thoughtful reflection, and a willingness to grapple with complex and often uncomfortable truths. I spent countless hours poring over historical archives, academic journals, and travelogues, piecing together the fragments of a vast and multifaceted history. But research was only one part of the process. Equally important was the act of travel itself. It was through my own physical journeys that I was able to connect with the places and people I was writing about. The sights, sounds and smells of each destination brought history to life in a way that no book or archive ever could. Writing, for me, is a process of discovery. As I delved deeper into my research and travels, I found myself constantly surprised by new discoveries and unexpected connections. The act of writing became a journey of its own, one that challenged my assumptions and broadened my understanding of the world. Section 7. The Honour of Bockhandler Prison In 2020, Sjö Farerun was awarded the prestigious Bockhandler Prison, Norway's most important literary award. It is given annually to the best Norwegian book of the year, chosen by a jury of booksellers. Receiving this award was an incredible honour, a testament to the years of work I had poured into the book. It was also deeply gratifying to know that my work had resonated with readers and booksellers across Norway. The Bok Handler Prison recognises literary excellence, but it also celebrates books that spark important conversations and connect with readers on a deeper level. I believe Shofararun resonated with readers because it addressed themes that are both timely and universal. The legacies of colonialism, the power of cultural exchange, and the importance of understanding our shared history. Winning the Bok Handler Prizen has given Shofararun a wider platform and introduced my work to a broader audience. It has also encouraged me to continue exploring important and challenging themes in my writing. Section 8. The Power of Travel Literature I believe that travel literature has a unique ability to foster empathy and understanding across cultures. By sharing our experiences of encountering different ways of life, we can challenge stereotypes, broaden our perspectives and build bridges of understanding. In a world often divided by difference, travel literature offers a powerful antidote to prejudice and intolerance. It reminds us of our shared humanity and the importance of embracing diversity in all its forms. Shafararan is my contribution to this ongoing conversation. It is a book that invites readers to step outside their comfort zones to challenge their assumptions and to engage with the complexities of our interconnected world. Section 9. An invitation to explore. As you turn the pages of Shofararun, I invite you to embark on your own journey of discovery. Let the stories of the people and places I encountered transport you to distant lands and bygone eras. Allow yourself to be challenged by the complexities of history and inspired by the resilience of the human spirit. And most importantly, 
I hope that Quofaran will ignite within you a passion for exploration, a desire to learn from other cultures, and a commitment to building a more just and equitable